how I feel about this. I feel like I look maybe a little bit like a Spice Girl today, except my Spice Girl name would be early 30s life crisis spice. So yeah, anyway. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, hi, my name's Hermione. So today, here are my tips for how to decorate either for free or really inexpensively on a budget with all of the tips that I've learned over the last however many years of doing this. Before I jump into today's video, I wanna let you know that it's very kindly being sponsored by Karma. Karma is a virtual shopping assistant that you can use on your computer or your phone. And I've been working with them for a while and I think they're a great way to save money, particularly if you're looking for home decor. So let me tell you a little bit more. Karma is a free app and Chrome extension that ensures that you never miss a price drop or a coupon code. Check the link below if you want to try it for yourself. I like to use Karma to track home decor items that I really, really love. This gives me time to think about whether I actually want to bring them into my house, if I've got the space, and it makes sure that I can get them for the best price. All you have to do is download the Chrome extension and then you can visit your favorite stores and add items to your wish list that you want to keep an eye on. You'll be notified via email or mobile push notification when an item that you've saved goes on sale or has a coupon or even comes back in stock if you've been waiting for that to happen. You can also organize your shopping by wish lists, which is really handy. Maybe you want to buy something for someone special or furnish a new house. It's a great way to keep track of what you're looking for. Karma also scans the web for coupon codes and applies them at checkout automatically, which is a really great feature, but this one only works on the Chrome extension. So you've got to download that if you want to use it. And when you shop from select retail partners, Karma gives cash back to you and a good cause. Use the link in my description box to download Karma's free Chrome extension and try it out for yourself. Now let's get into the list. Here are some of the ways that I think you can decorate for free. The first thing I recommend you do, whether you're starting from scratch, well, you probably wouldn't really need to do it if you're starting from scratch, but if you have established a home with lots of furniture in, I would recommend you go through and have a look and get rid of anything that you no longer want if it's not practical or useful, there's no reason to keep it, why not pass it on or donate it, sell it if you can. You might make a bit of money to then reinvest into something you might find on Facebook Marketplace. The best thing I think you can do for your home that I have definitely found challenging over the years, but I know for a fact it is the thing that's made me the most comfortable is to declutter and really keep on top of what I do and don't need. This is free to do, so it's number one on my list before we get into anything else. My next tip is along a similar vein, and I think that if you've been here for a while, you know I love to do this, and that is to reshuffle your furniture. If you feel like your space currently isn't working for you, reassess the layout and see if you can move things around. Sometimes just by moving the couch or a table, you'll find that your whole space has a completely new lease of life. It's got a lot more flow and it means you can utilize it much more practically than you could before. Sometimes I find that when I move things around, I'm actually less likely to wanna redecorate it because it's just given me that little bit of a boost that I needed. And really, I didn't actually need to completely redecorate, I just needed to move stuff. <laughs> so those are my two tips of things that you should do before bringing anything into the house, but now we can get into the juicy stuff, the free furniture. There are a few different ways that I think you can get free furniture. My favorite, as we've seen in the past, is that I have very, very, very luckily been given a lot of hand-me-downs. When I first got my new house, loads of my family were moving at the same time and I was so lucky to be able to be given lots of their old decor because they were downsizing. In hindsight, this got me into a little bit of trouble because I probably said yes to too much stuff but this is a mistake I won't be making again and I was so grateful for these things when I first moved because I had a sofa to sit on and a dining table to eat at or put more clutter on for a few months. <laughs> I had so many things that I was so lucky for, and although a lot of them weren't really my style or they didn't really complement each other because they came from different people, 
I made it work and I did DIY a lot of these pieces. I think when people are offering you furniture, particularly family members or friends, it's definitely worth assessing first if it's anything you need. But even if it's not quite the right style, it's worth taking it until you can find something you really, really love and then you can pass on that piece when the time comes. When I moved out of my house, I gave loads of my furniture to my friend Vicky, who had just moved into a bigger house and she needed more furniture to furnish it. Like I said, there is so much you can do with furniture, even if it's not your style, and if priority is saving money for right now, take it, paint it, do whatever you can with it, and make it work until the time comes to replace it. The next place to find unwanted furniture, sometimes for free but not always, is online. And this is going to depend on your local area and the resources you have available to you. Obviously Facebook Marketplace is the big one, and I haven't used this, I'll be honest, I haven't used Facebook Marketplace because I deleted Facebook years ago. <laughs> it probably helped me because then I didn't end up buying a lot more furniture. But Facebook Marketplace is a great place to see what people are offering in your area. Maybe there's something inexpensive and oftentimes people just want to get rid of stuff and they list it for free. And if you don't have Facebook, there are tons of other local websites that you can use. Back at home on the Isle of Wight, we had something called White Bay and you'd often find free stuff on there. I guess Facebook Marketplace is probably the way people do things nowadays, but it's definitely worth keeping an eye on your local area and your local sites to see what's popping up. And the more you check, the more likely you are to find something really good when it comes up. If you prefer leaving things up to chance, you can always keep your eyes peeled while walking around the local neighborhood. People are always throwing out furniture, whether they're waiting for curbside pickup, throwing it in a skip, or leaving it outside with a sign on it that says free. There is so much to find. Here are a few clips of things I found just in the past few days. I'm always seeing people put stuff out here and just waiting for people to take it. And my best free find, if you've seen this video before, in my old house, I found that really, really beautiful fireplace and that was completely free. I think people would rather see things get reused than send it to landfill. So keep your eyes peeled. You never know what you'll find, especially when you've just got a new house and you want to fill it. Keep your eyes open. <laughs> now that we've discussed furniture, let's talk about home decor pieces. All of these tips are also free or very inexpensive. The first one that I've been harping on about probably since I started YouTube is to put wrapping paper in a frame and frame it as art. You can find really interesting wrapping paper, most of it's just a series of repeated prints and patterns, and often it comes in a huge roll that will fill a frame that's either A3 or even A2 sized. If you don't have any wrapping paper that you love already lying around, I'd recommend going out and having a look either in little boutique independent shops or my favourite place to find it is Oliver Bonus because often it's sold by the sheet and it's a really big sheet of a really fun print and you can get it for about £2 to £2.50. Next up, this is something I've done over the years to add a little bit of colour or texture to my space and that is to fake a bed runner or a blanket on a couch by just using a scarf. So simple! Scarves come in all kinds of textures and prints and they're so easy to just drape at the end of the bed. Admittedly, this works better on a single or a double bed than a king size bed like I have, but I remember buying a scarf when I was in university and it was like a checkered scarf. I wonder if I still have it. And I just used to lay it on the end of my bed and it made a little bit of difference to my room. <laughs> Next tip for something that is free is foraging for stuff that you can stick in a vase. You can find any kind of foliage, sticks, or even dried flowers and pampas grass in your garden or a friend's garden in the summertime. I love going into my nan's garden and going flower shopping and getting her to help me make a big bouquet of hydrangeas and then just having that in my house. Hydrangeas I think you can dry them out as well. There's a lot of flowers and plants and foliage that can be dried out or dries out naturally. That can look good for a really long time if you want to keep it for a long time too. But yeah, I like borrowing plants from my nan's garden that she then doesn't get back. Thanks, nan! <laughs> Next tip, so simple, I feel like a stuck record when I say this, but spray paint 
anything, <laughs> whether this be little figurines that you're a bit bored of or vases. You can even spray paint, draw handles and pulls and that makes a furniture piece look completely different. Nowadays there's so many different types of spray paint too. You can get the stone effect ones, you can get frosted glass, mirror effect. There's so much you can do with them but if you don't want to fork out for the spray paint you can always do the trick where you add the baking soda to the just a regular paint to paint something and get that cool kind of stone effect. I feel like that's been doing the rounds for years now, but that's a really easy way to upcycle something that you already have. This is one that I think I mentioned before in the last video, but if you have a rug or a bath mat or some kind of runner, you can always turn it into wall art. I saw this actually in Ikea the other day. They had on the wall one of their rugs behind the bed and it kind of made a faux headboard. And I thought that looked really, really cool. It added a nice texture and a bit of a statement moment to the bed area that I think you could implement if you have an old rug lying around. And speaking of wall art, I know we've talked about wall art a lot, but I do have an old DIY video that I made last year about DIY wall art ideas. And I think looking back, actually most of these are really affordable to make, particularly the colorful paper collage, which made a big statement. That's pretty cheap. In that video, I cut up an old art book. I know not everyone likes when you cut up books. That's a way to put prints on the wall. I used some old fabric scraps and attached those to a big canvas. I I think that one is actually under my couch at the moment. I kind of want to put that back on the wall. There's so many things you can do with wall art that are really inexpensive and make a huge impact. And once again, not straying too far from wall art, something I like to do whenever I go anywhere, particularly to art galleries, I pick up a ton of postcards. They're about 80p each, but if you're collecting them over time, they kind of make up a really nice story of all the places that you've been and the artwork that you've seen. You could do this with travel or whatever, but postcards I think are a really nice way to add a really personalized touch to a space for quite an inexpensive price tag. That one's not technically free, but it's one that I like to do a lot. So I think that's it for my tips for how to decorate for free or on quite a tight budget. I've used a lot of these tips in the past, sometimes out of necessity, but more recently, I found that I like being able to save money, help the environment by not always buying new and being a bit more meticulous when I am buying new things. And in all honesty, I think the journey of collecting my home over the years and the rush of finding something quite inexpensively has been far more fun than if I would have a brand new beautifully designed house as much as I would like one. It has been more fun and it's helped me collect a home that feels a little bit more like it tells a story. And if you feel the same and you've got any tips for how to decorate for free that I haven't mentioned today, please let me know in the comments down below and share them to help anyone who's going to be reading the comments come up with free ways to decorate for themselves. And with all of that said, I'm going to clock out for today. Don't forget, if you want to download Karma for yourself, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Do check it out. And with all of that being said, I will see you next time. Happy decorating. Bye.